all of life, all of nature is just waiting for us to open our hearts and our minds and our awareness to receive it. Life loves you. Life loves you. You were born out of love, regardless of the circumstances. If you think you were wanted or not, or what happened in your childhood, trust me, I get it. I had some heavy stuff happen to me as well that I'm still processing and healing. But regardless, it's a beautiful concept to just wrap your brain around that really life is about love. And no doubt there are definitely the polarities of the good and evil forces, as we know very well going on here in 2022 as I record this. But if you focus your lighthouse on the love beacon, nature and animals are part of life trying to show us its support of us and how it loves us. In today's busy world, how can we find the inspiration, knowledge, and energy to live a healthy and empowered life? If we balance and harmonize our mind, exercise our body, live according to the laws of nature, and connect to spirit, can we find a way to heal, become our authentic self, and live our purpose with love? I am your hostess, Amy Fournier, and welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite. And I'm back. Welcome back to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. I'm really glad you're here with me today because today it's just you and me. Today, I'm going to share with you one of my deep passions in my life that I've had ever since I was a little girl, and that is a deep love and communion with animals and nature. I'm so grateful that I'm at the place in my life where I can really reconnect to that part of me and who I've always been in uh, really studying nature and animals and how we really connect with each other and how animals are really the, the bridge between the spiritual and the physical. And uh, they can be our greatest teachers just by observing the animals, just like how uh, ancient elders have learned for thousands of years and ancient cultures and especially the Native American uh, cultures have learned how to commune with nature and live in more harmony and peace and balance by simply observing it, observing nature, taking the time to be present and truly look and look with all your senses, feel nature, observe how patterns and things are different, how different behaviors of different animals um, are, are exhibited and predicting weather by learning, by observing how the clouds look different every day and starting to see patterns and things. And this enabled them to not only live in more harmony, but also with more happiness and balance and wisdom. So returning to a lot of that, this, these lessons, this, what we're looking for is often right in front of us. It's just a matter of opening our awareness and our consciousness to allowing it in. And of course, that, that involves taking the time, right? Taking the time to be present with it and remembering in our busy, busy, modern, sophisticated lives. So I'm thrilled to have you here with me today. Today, as promised, in episode 78, which uh, was another solo cast I did, which was part one of this, where actually that episode is called Connect Connecting with Nature, a discussion on animals speak, the spiritual, symbolic, and magical powers of creatures great and small by Ted Andrews. Unfortunately, Ted Andrews is no longer on the physical plane, but he is just a pioneer, just so epic in his contributions to helping us humans understand the spiritual and the fairy realm and the non-physical world, as well as animals and all of nature for that matter, like with plants and uh, topography and rocks and crystals and stones. And wow, he just was so prolific. I, I can't quite remember. If you listen to episode 78, I talk about a little bit more about his background. I think he has like 15 books or 13 books for some reason. Um, but again, circle back to that episode because it gives a little more foundation as to what we're going to get into today, because today I'm going to share with you five power animals in particular that I chose that I thought would be uh, most helpful 
Um, now every every creature it has a spirit, has a a soul, if you will, and that creature is is very significant in the grand scheme of all of life. Uh, but so it was really hard for me to choose only five. Um, and what I've also learned is that we each as human beings have our own unique power animals, our own unique spiritual animals, animal totems. These are all different terms for the same concept of a special heartfelt soul connection that you have with a type of animal. Now I will say that I've become aware of, I have seven power animals in each one of my major chakras in my body. We're going to talk about one of them today, actually. One of the ones today is one of my power animals, that's for sure. Um, but at different times in your life, you will have different connections with different creatures. Now, remember, these are all different realms of, of living beings, from reptiles to aquatic life to uh, mammals all different creatures can be spirit animals. So you might also want to check out episode 66, Channeling Your Power Animals and Awakening Your Inner Wisdom with rock star shaman Allison Charles. Again, episode 66, uh, we go into her book on specific power animals and, and spirit guide animals and her work as a shaman. It's really a great episode. So more on the same topic of today and 78 the background on animal speak ted andrews uh classic uh best-selling book animal speak we'll get into today so i wanted to start by sharing with you a quote from chief dan george and it says if you talk to the animals they will talk to you and you will know each other if you do not talk to them you will not know them and what you do not know, you will fear. What one fears, one destroys. I thought that was a really beautiful quote that's in Animal Speak book and says a lot, you know? So talking to animals and they'll talk back to you and all of life, all of nature is just waiting for us to open our hearts and our minds and our awareness to receive it because life loves you. Life loves you. Life, you were born out of love, regardless of the circumstances. If you think you were wanted or not, or what happened in your childhood, trust me, I get it. I had some heavy stuff happen to me as well that I'm still processing and healing. Um, but regardless, it's a beautiful concept to just wrap your brain around that really life is about love. And no doubt there are definitely the polarities of the good and evil forces, as we know very well going on here in 2022 as I record this. But regardless, if you focus your lighthouse on the love beacon, let's move toward that side, shall we? <laughs> and if that's the case, nature and animals are part of life trying to show us its support of us and how it loves us. And that begins with opening your heart to, okay, teach me, having some humility. All right, I want to learn. What can you teach me? What can the, the lowly mosquito teach me about life and resiliency? So in this episode, as promised, I will probably refer to them just for consistency as uh, spirit animals or power animals. That's kind of how I was taught by my mentor, uh, but they're called different things. Okay. So remember that different times in your life, different animals will really speak to you and connect with you more than others. I mean, a common one are the animals that are right in front of us, like dogs, for example, right? I mean, it's kind of one of those things like, yeah, I'm an animal person or I'm not an animal person. <laughs> Have you always been someone who just loves dogs or animals? I mean, I know when I was a kid, I have a brother and we always had creatures in our house. We had turtles, we had gerbils, we had hamsters, we had bunnies, we had fish in an aquarium tank. Of course we had dogs, we had cats. We even had birds at one point, like parakeets. My mother hated that because they were, <laughs> the cage was always dirty and they'd make a lot of noise. 
Uh, but we, and one thing I always wanted as a kid was a horse. I wanted a horse so, so badly. I would beg and cry and plead for like years <laughs> for a horse. I think my parents were always waiting for me to outgrow that stage, which lasted much longer than they would have liked. I took uh, horseback riding lessons. I went to equestrian school and I would dream of having my own horse one day. And uh, as we will learn in today's uh, episode, uh, there's a lot of reason that a lot of young girls really dream of horses. And the horse is an extremely powerful, powerful spirit animal and is symbolic of many, many things. And uh, for example, um, all of the all of the creatures can be symbolic of different things in our lives. But mythically, a horse is a symbol of freedom and power and even moving like travel so a lot of times children will fantasize about horses because it's a way of them feeling free and powerful when a lot of times they feel powerless so i know that was a big part of uh, my connection with horses so by just simply examining the animals that you are have been most interested in in at the different times in your life will help uh, kind of awaken you as to what your soul is trying to tell you about those animals and your connection to it so you can ask yourself questions like uh which animal or bird has always fascinated you like which ones are have you been drawn to when you visited a uh, this the zoo as a kid um which ones really just captured your attention and you what did you want to see the most um, and when you're around, just in your everyday life, what animals do you see most frequently when you're out in nature? And particularly if you have unusual encounters. So this is the thing that gets tricky. Like I mentioned, a lot of us have dogs around us. So we might think, oh, a dog's my spirit animal. But it can be that, it can be that. But like where uh, my place in up in New England, there's a lot of squirrels and chipmunks and certain types of birds. So. You can be exposed to certain animals depending on your region. Now, um, I've always loved like like snow leopards. I've, since I was a kid, I love snow leopards. Um, a lot of people love, of course, panthers, like black panthers, because they're super cool and sleek and sexy, and I get it. Um, but why was I always really drawn to snow leopards growing up in um, you know New England in America? So there's lots, a lot of times we're drawn to things that, for, for a reason that's not just because they're in front of us, okay? Now, that being said, when the animal behavior is also important. So let's say, for example, you, you do live in an area that has squirrels. So yes, these animals are around your proximity. You might notice as you're observing nature and open now in your heart, like we mentioned, to, to receive messages and communication and wisdom and from, from nature and the animals around you, after a while, you, you kind of get to understand their behavior. And this is where it starts to get interesting because that's when you notice a pattern interrupt, a change of behavior. It's like your dog or even your kids or whatever, like they're doing something differently. Like you, you know, geez, my dog's been sleeping a lot more than normal. Something's going on or, uh, my dog's barking more than normal or what, whatever it may be. Squirrels, like they, uh, they're, they're fighting more when they're outside in my yard than they used to. Or, gosh, I've noticed they haven't been coming around lately. They're not even coming around much anymore. There might be a predator in the area. There might be a storm coming. Um, there might be scarcity of food, which is why they're fighting more. They're, so you just, just different things. You start to really become cognizant of changes of behavior. Um, for example, another one would be like, let's say you have raccoons. Okay. Now you might notice one day that, uh, you know, you go out to the trash late at night and, oh my God, there's a raccoon there. Now, does that mean the raccoon is your spirit animal? <laughs> Not necessarily. It might be because you left the lid off the trash can and the raccoon was coming to get some dinner. So, you know, duh, logically, <laughs> the raccoon is just coming to eat. It's not coming to connect with you in particular on that day. So you have to kind of do the math. Now, that being said, if in that circumstance, the raccoon stops 
and maybe runs away or looks at you or turns back or does something kind of really just unusual and you just get in your gut like, okay, I get it. I left the trash lid off the container, but something was weird about the way that raccoon looked at me or something or it came back around or I don't know, just, I just don't want to blanket statement that that means it wasn't a connection from the animal uh, just because you had the trash lid off the trash can. Okay. It, it's really about you. Okay. And this is just a bigger um, application we can make to all of life. It's really just that instantaneous instinctual split second reaction that you get in your gut, your soul, your heart as to what you really think. And don't bring your head into judging it and analyzing it and bringing the logical brain into it. Okay. The soul speaks through the right side of the brain. The, the, the spiritual body is in another realm. It's not in our logical, linear, tangible, materialistic part of our being. It's in another plane. It's another astral existence. And that plane operates on a different dimension of time. It's actually timelessness. All things are happening at once at the same time, if they ever happened at all (laughs) in that realm. Now there's a, there's something to meditate on, but what I'm getting at is, is as we learn from other people and books and resources, or even as you're listening to this, it's all well and good. But at the end of the day, it's really about what you're experiencing and what your higher self is telling you is the accurate truth. That take that to the bank, apply that to everything in your life, whether it be a vitamin, a shot, a, a mask, a pill, a whatever, a book, anything that people are recommending or telling you to do, even if they're in a position of authority, all the more reason why you got to weigh it against yourself and just see if it resonates with what's in your gut. And if you don't have a clear channel as to your higher self, homework number one is developing one is developing that time. And how do you do that? How do you develop any relationship? By taking the time to connect. Okay, you gotta put time in to have a relationship with anything. And that goes to yourself as well. Um, I, every day now, coming up on about three years, every single day I start my day. Well, not sometimes start my day, but every single day I definitely, in the beginning of the day, connect with my soul every single day when I do my prayers and my, just my connection to the earth and my gratitudes. I always connect with my soul. And, uh, because of that, I've developed an ability to tap in much easier. And wow, I've even developed the ability to channel different things in my life, different spirits in my life, different connections with people, both living and dead on the astral plane. It's been a powerful, powerful experience. And, um, I can tell you that there's been nothing as grounding and comforting and peace promoting as my ability to do that. And in, and, and comforting in the way that I feel less alone in the world, um, having that intimate connection with myself and great spirit and the great creator, whatever you want to call him, her, it, (laughs) it's been Uh, well, Jesus even refers to it in the Bible as the peace that surpasses all understanding. That's the peace, the serenity, the sense of satisfaction and happiness that we're all looking for. It's that connection with spirit. So that's one that comes with time. Okay. Like any other connection. So just a little backstory on that. Okay. So yes, power animals, spirit animals, They can come to you at different times in your life. Uh, They can change. It's really about how you feel and what's going on when you're encountering them. And something to think about too is, you know, have you just had favorite animals your whole life? Like I said, the horse has always been something for me. Um, And and they got to go beyond just what's in your proximity. Okay. So every animal has a powerful spirit. And... um, We have to look beyond domesticated animals and a lot of times our lifelong power animals are actually wild animals for sure. Um, There are a few exceptions, um, like for example, the domesticated dog, um, 
but you could look to its wild counterpart, maybe even the wolf and the link there with that with that um, genealogy train uh, train there. Um, and it said, uh, Ted Andrews speaks that and teaches that the animal chooses the person, not the other way around, that they choose us, uh, particularly when they make themselves seen in an unusual circumstance, like I was mentioning, you know, like, wow, I've never seen, like, oh my gosh, I can't, I have to share with you that uh, it was just about, just a couple years ago now, I had an amazing encounter when I was out taking a walk with Charlotte, my little dog, around my neighborhood but it was at dusk and we know that the spiritual realm is the most powerful at times of dusk and dawn those two times are the most powerful time in the spiritual realm because it said that there's a thinning of the veil there's a thinning of the veil of time between the day and the night and how the spirit crosses over. So times of dusk and dawn have always been the time where uh, the Tibetan monks would do things and the Native Americans would perform ceremonies and people would really connect in, a, in an easier way with spirit. So um, that being said, this particular night when, when I was taking a walk with my dog and I was not out in nature, I was not in some mountain or a you know, a trail or anything, which I really like to walk. I was in my neighborhood. I was literally like a couple blocks from my house. Now, granted, I do near, I do live near some woods. Okay. Which is why it makes sense, but it was at dusk and I was coming around the corner with my little dog. And all of a sudden I looked up on the left side of the street and somebody's yard was a big buck a male deer with a full rack of antlers. I literally gasped, stopped in my place, grabbed the leash of my dog really hard to make sure she didn't proceed. Now it was a good, oh, I don't know, several hundred feet from me, but still it, I saw it and it saw me and we were staring at each other and it froze and I froze and I was just it actually takes my breath away to visualize what happened. I was just absolutely captivated, absolutely captivated. My heart started just opening and beating and expanding. And I just looked in the eyes of this animal and was so in awe and gratitude and love for its magnificence, its majesty. It was just incredible. I had never seen a huge male deer alive like that with a full set of antlers like I said a full rack wow out of nowhere so if I wasn't looking around and paying attention I would have missed it and I basically froze I didn't know what to do but within a few seconds it then looked off and just leaped away and it leaped over this big stone uh wall that my the neighbor had it was like an old beat up wall fence type thing of its yard it just in one big bounded leap it just jumped right over that like it was a little pebble on the ground and just went away into the field across the road and i was literally standing there like with my mouth on the ground for another like several minutes and my dog is like can we go now and i just couldn't believe that experience so of course i had to look up what a deer meant at that time and it was very interesting and i will add as a little side note that i have learned that the antlers on a deer are considered to be antenna and that's a big reason why a lot of the native americans would wear uh you know like the the antenna or excuse me the antlers on their heads and stuff when they would perform uh healing ceremonies and sun dances and rituals because they're connecting with great spirit antenna through the power animal of the deer. So um, very, very powerful. So that was an amazing encounter I had. So that's just an example of how something out of the ordinary, I mean, there was no question that that deer had a message for me that day. And um, I remember that uh, I, I, when I looked, I like ran home and looked up what the meaning of that whole thing was. And it sure did resonate with what was going on in my life. So pay attention to when things uh, are out of the, out of the normal. Okay. Out of the ordinary, when you get, especially with wildlife. Okay. And don't rule out a ladybug on your shoulder, by the way, 
that happened to me the other day, like, wow, like it's on my shoulder and it's not getting off. What's this all about? Okay, I look up a ladybug and see what the, the medicine of the ladybug has to teach me today. Um, it, it, it ticks and things that we don't think are normally like cute and fuzzy can be uh, power animals, a spirit realm trying to come through to you to give you a message to connect with you, some sort of medicine and wisdom. So an aquatic life, but again, you might need to be near them, but who knows, maybe you have a pond in your backyard or something, uh, or you come across a turtle or even, I hate to say it, but like roadkill, you know, like a, a, a turtle that's dead on the side of the road can mean something. So these are all ways. All right, so let's get into some of the spirit animals that I want to share with you today. So just because I want to remind you that every single living creature can be a potential spirit guide, okay? So the first one I'm going to share with you is the eagle. Ha ha, the eagle. There's a reason why Native Americans had such reverence for eagles, okay? Wow, they're incredible beings. Okay, so I just want to just remind you that I'm referring to the book Animal Speak by Ted Andrews here. Okay, so eagles represent the illumination of spirit, healing, and creation. Their cycle of power is all seasons during the daylight. So that's the time where they're the most powerful. The eagle is one of the greatest and most admired birds of prey. It has served as an inspiration to many societies. Their ability to soar and hunt amazes and thrills those who witness. Eagles, in fact, are so good at getting food, they spend very little time hunting. The fact that they're good at feeding themselves from the land and still soar to great heights in the sky reflects much about the hidden significance of the eagle who comes as a spirit guide. They will teach a balance of being of the earth but not in it. I love that. Isn't that awesome? Every society which has had contact with eagles has developed a mythology and or a mysticism about them. In ancient Aztec traditions, the chief god told the people to settle in a place where they'd find an eagle perched on a cactus eating a snake. This place later became Mexico City. The eagle was sacred to Zeus, who often changed himself into the form of an eagle to help himself control thunder and lightning. The Sumerians worshipped an eagle god, and the Hittles used a double-headed eagle as a symbolic emblem so they would never be surprised. The eagle has also been associated with Jupiter and is a strong emblem for the Roman Empire. In eagle hier hieroglyphics, the eagle is a symbol for the vowel A, and also a symbol for the soul, the spirit, and the warmth of life. In early Christian mysticism, the eagle was a symbol of resurrection. The thunderbird to the Native Americans is often depicted in the form of an eagle. This was the great spirit who controlled lightning and rain, punishment and reward. To the Plains Cree, all eagles had mystical power, and these powers could be shared by anyone who possessed a part of that bird. To the Pueblo Indians, the eagle was a bird of the sky, and the ability to spiral upward until it passed through a hole in the sky to the home of the sun. It was associated with all the energies of the sun, the physical and the spiritual. The Pueblo Indians honored six directions, north, south, east, west, zenith, which is above, and nadar, which is below. The eagle was the symbol of the zenith because of its ability to soar to great heights. They would talk about how the eagle flies higher than they could even see, flyer, flies higher than any of the clouds and higher than all the other birds, which is part of its majesty to them and its power. From these great heights, the eagle could survey all four directions, so they became symbols of greater sight and perception. To the Hopis, the golden and bald eagles were the greatest of all birds of the sky, but these are the only two eagles that live upon our continent. 
Some groups of Hopis also include the red-tailed hawk as an eagle, referencing it as the red eagle. There is actually 59 species of eagles, and they're often divided into one of four categories. Fish and sea eagles, snake eagles, harpy or giant forest head eagles, and the booted eagles. But there's always a great deal of variety within these four groups. Upon the North American continent, the bald eagle is part of this category of the fish and sea eagle. Those who have a bald eagle as a spirit guide need to look at the symbolic associations of water. Water and fish are often symbolic with the psychic aspects and the creative energies. And they're also the feminine, I will add. Water is also an area that separates land from heavens. Thus, a bird of the water, such as a fish or a sea eagle, reflects an awakening ability or need to learn to walk between worlds. Water is the creative source of life, and living near natural water sources may be important to the health of those who have a bald eagle as a spirit guide. An eagle hunting in the waters must be able to penetrate the waters, grasp what it requires, and then rise out of them. All this reflects increased ability and need to learn to work with emotions, psychicism, and the all aspects of spirituality with greater control. It reflects teachings about true mediatorship, being able to enter and exit the more ethereal realms at will. Snake eagles often have crests or feathers upon their head. Their toes are short and strong and enable them to glass grasp and hold onto wiggling snakes. Those who have a snake eagle as a totem would do well to study their section on snakes within the text. The snake eagles swallow the snakes whole, reflecting the swallowing and digesting of higher wisdom, the serpent knowledge. You see, once again, animals are symbols of how their unique behaviors, and I mentioned this in episode 70. Eight, how their unique characteristics, qualities, behaviors, all that are symbolic of what the medicine is for us to learn at a particular time of life. So the two that are the most important eagles on the continent of America are the bald and the golden eagle. The bald eagle is larger than the golden, but it cannot fly as high, nor is it considered as graceful. The bald eagle is often a symbol of the feminine, while the golden eagle symbolizes the masculine. The white feathers of the bald eagle especially are often treasured as they are links to grandmother medicine, tremendous wisdom, healing, and creation. So that's just something worth pondering, I think, for a moment, is that Although the bald eagle, which is the one, you know, that's on the American dollar and the symbol of America, is larger than the golden, because it's larger, it can't fly as high. So you might think, oh, yeah, it's bigger, it's badder, it's more badass, you know. But everything has a front and a back, right? Everything has a compromise. It's the duality of life. Because it's larger, which is enables it to have certain qualities, it can't fly as high. It's not as buoyant. So it's something to just consider that's like, you know, bigger is not always better. It's just different. So it depends really on what your priorities are, right? And it's not considered as graceful because it's just bigger. Um, although the bald eagle is considered a symbol of the feminine and the golden symbolizes the masculine, which is another interesting point because the bald eagle is bigger and that's the feminine one, whereas the golden is smaller and it's the masculine. So, you know, it's just, nature is just incredible. The feathers of eagles are sacred to Native Americans. And since the eagle is protected by the United States government, it's a felony for anyone to possess a feather who's not a Amer Native American blood. The feathers, though, are used in powerful healing ceremonies to help cleanse the aura, and even to help the practitioner shapeshift. Both the bald and golden eagle have come to symbolize heroic nobility and divine spirit. These eagles are the messengers from heaven and are the embodiment of the spirit of the sun. They also symbolize the rediscovery of our inner child. There was once a belief that as old age approached, 
the eagle's eye would grow dim, and the eagle would then fly so near to the sun that it would become scorched. It then would seek out a pure water source and dip itself three times into the clear water. This reflects much from a mystical point of view. It hints of resurrection, but it also hints of alchemy. The fire of the sun and the clear water are opposite elements brought into harmony in a manner that elicits a change. So I don't know if you're aware of the four primary elements, which are water, earth, fire, and air. And this is a beautiful example of how eagle medicine teaches us the alchemy of the element of fire, which is the transformative spiritual element that burns away all that's not true, all that doesn't serve us. It's why spiritual growth can be so challenging and hard and painful because it's, it's just not fun to have to grow spiritually, that's for sure. Your, your soul is always giving you the lessons that you need to help elevate your consciousness. And a lot of times we can really not like those lessons. They're very uncomfortable and make us really sad. <laughs> That's for sure. But our soul always wants us to be elevated and evolve our consciousness. And that involves the element of fire burning away. It's like the Phoenix rising from the ashes, burning away all the false beliefs, all the untruths, all the darkness, all the shame, all the pain, all of that is burned away through alchemy and how water comes in to help harmonize because water is the cleansing element. It's the feminine element. It's that divine goddess life energy that detoxifies and washes away and helps cleanse us anew. So this example of the eagle is a beautiful uh, story of the alchemy in action. This story also reflects several needs for people that have an eagle as a power animal. There must be involvement with creativity because three is the number of new birth and creativity. That's what the symbology and numerology of three is. So this story talks about there's a reason, you know, whenever you hear a mythical story, every single word means something. It's not just a coincidence that the eagle dipped itself three times three for a reason because of numerology like i said three is the number of new birth and creativity so it's a message from if if you connect with spirit animal uh, eagle guide that three is important to you and it's important for you to express your creativity in your life in some regard and that can be anything from the way you set a table to the way you arrange flowers to the way you dress so the way you talk, different ways to do your hair, whatever it may be, bringing, uh, creating a garden or even having a baby is obviously the ultimate creativity. Starting a new business is creativity. Making something new from nothing is a form of creativity and it's a form of practicing ego medicine. Also, this lesson teaches us a willingness to experience extremes in a controlled condition and thus facilitate the alchemical process within your life. So this eagle demonstrates in the story the, the extremes of getting scorched by the heat of the sun and then dropping into the water and the clear, cool water. So a willingness for you to experience extremes in order to alchemize your growth and evolution. Also, it, it demonstrates a willingness to use your passions to purify, like flying into the sun, and to use your abilities, even if it means being scorched a little. It also demonstrates a willingness to seek out the true emotional aspects of oneself and immerse yourself within them, and by doing so, rediscovering the lost child and awaken a higher sense of purity, passion, creativity, healing, and spirituality. So an examination of the individual characteristics and behaviors of the ego will reveal even more of the medicine and power attunement that it will bring to you. The feet of the ego, for example, have four toes. Now going back to numerology, four is a traditional symbol for keeping oneself grounded. Think of a square, the four corners of a square, right? It's like that real solid foundation. So it's not a coincidence an eagle has four toes. Even with the eagle's magnificent ability to fly, it stays connected to the earth. That's the symbolism here. The talons of the eagle are meant to grasp and hunt. 
This reflects the need to stay connected, to grasp and utilize the things of the earth. Without an ability to grasp powerfully and utilize what it grasps, this ego will not survive. So it's an important lesson there. The sharp beak is designed to cut, tear, and crush. The eagle has strong jaw muscles. The jaw is important to digestion and speech with humans, but there's a difference with eagles. Although vocally the eagle is weak, its jaws are one of the most powerful muscles. For those with eagle power, power animals, it will be important to know when to speak, how much to speak, and how strongly to speak. It will be important to remember that unless this is controlled, it will be very easy to inadvertently hurt someone with words like cutting, tearing, or crushing them. For those with eagle power animals, new vision will open. This vision will be far reaching to the past and within the present to the future as well. The eyes of the eagle are set close to the front of the head. So they have a 3D or binocular vision, just like humans. They can see forward and sideways, and their vision is eight times greater than humans. Wow, eight times. You know, hence the expression eagle eyes, right? Meditate on the number eight, especially if it's a figure like the infinity symbol, which is a sideways number eight. This will reveal much about the kind of vision that the eagle can awaken in you. The ears of an eagle are not visible, which is super interesting, but it hears very well. It can hunt as much as it by ear or by sight. It can hunt as much by ear as it can by sight. That's incredible. So we don't even see that they have ears. I actually didn't even know eagles had ears until a little while ago because you can't see them, right? So I think that's very symbolic that just because you can't see something with your human physical eye doesn't mean it's not there, right? So it's a beautiful example of that, that yes, eagles have ears. And not only do they have ears, but they can actually hunt and survive by finding their prey with just the power of their ears. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I love it. So to those people whom an eagle comes, the ability to hear spiritually as well as physically will also increase. Many eagles mate for life. The male will collect the material for the nests, but the female will be the architect. So they're in partnership, the yin and the yang, the perfect complementary, not competitive, complementary relationship. These roles should be considered for anyone working with eagle medicine. The nests are always large and built high up for safety. Although the roles and construction of the nests are separate, the tasks of feeding the young is shared by both the male and the female so as a lesson of the cooperative nature of responsibility. The mating ritual of a bald eagle is one of its most mystical and intriguing aspects. A powerful form of a sky dance occurs. The birds soar, loop, and plunge into deep dives. At a certain point, they grab each other's feet and lock talons, rolling and falling to the earth until the mating is completed. How dramatic! Geez, I don't know about you, but I got to up the game of my sex life. That's pretty inspiring that you're uh, copulating while d descending at hundreds of miles an hour, plummeting to the earth. <laughs> wow. Then they separate and they soar upward to repeat the process over and over again. I guess it wasn't enough the first time. This reflects some of the mystical joy, danger, excitement, and power of the sexual energy expressed by those with eagle medicine. You go, girl. It can open them up to new heights and thrills. The eagle is a true predator. And as well with all predators, it helps to keep the word in balance. Pred predators capture the weak and the sick, helping to keep the natural world healthy by preventing the spread of disease. This healing role is one that will awaken in many forms for those working with eagle totems. They will have a powerful sense of energy conservation in their hunting. They will often perch and wait, binding their time through joyful soaring and aerial acrobatics, all the time using their great vision to let them know when to take flight and capture their prey. This sense of confident energy 
conservation will be necessary for those people with ego medicine to develop. They are opportunistics, and they will let other birds do the hunting for them, often stealing the food from the other birds or predators. Whenever ego flies into one's life, opportunities, even those thought as being long lost, always arise. Cool. Those with eagle totems must learn to see their opportunities and snatch them as they arise. Use those talons. Eagles don't always swoop down to kill. They have tremendous control over their powerful wings and they can glide slowly and silently so their prey doesn't even hear them coming, even though they're huge. They, always, they are also known to be able to stop their movements and just hover in the air for brief moments to make the strike more accurate. A new sense of timing and movement will begin to develop with those people with eagle power animals. You will learn to swoop, to soar, to dive and to hover, to use the winds within your life and your own developing wings to ride them to your own benefit. Large eagles don't just kill with their beaks or talons. Some can hit their prey with great force, this alone being enough to stun or kill the prey. Remember, eagles are huge. A bald eagle can strike with twice the force of a rifle bullet. Holy mackerel, that's incredible. This reflects the primal force inherent and easily awakened within eagle medicine. Eagles are symbols of great power a power that goes beyond their actual size. The average bald eagle will weigh between 8 and 10 pounds, but 2 pounds less than the average house cat. To align oneself with eagle medicine is to take on the responsibility and the power of becoming so much more than you now appear to be. From a karmic aspect, it reflects that the events will now fly faster and the repercussions for everything you think, do, or say, or fail to think, do, or say, either positive or negative, watch that self-talk, will be both stronger and quicker now. To accept the eagle as a totem or a spirit guide, power animal, is to accept a powerful new dimension to life and a heightened responsibility for your spiritual growth. But only through doing so do you learn how to move between worlds, touch all life with healing, and become the mediator and the bearer of new creative force within the world. Amen. Eagle, power animal, baby. There's a reason why they are so revered in so many cultures through the centuries. Don't you love it? Yeah. I don't know about you, but I don't live in a place to see eagles. I wish I did. Someday I hope to see one live. It's my dream. The next animal I want to share with you is the elk. Now, similar to me seeing that male buck deer, the elk is similar, obviously, type of animal. But it's also been very meaningful to me because it's pervasive in North America and Elk hide is used for many of my drums. Now, if you're watching me with me here on my YouTube channel, Awakening Aphrodite Fit Amy TV, if you look right over there in that corner, down there over on my shoulder, you'll see three of my drums. And uh, two of the three are elk hide from the sacred elk. Elk was always considered to be a sacred animal by the Native Americans. And there's a reason why elk hides are used in drumming. That's another discussion though. <laughs> I use my drumming in our in my monthly women's circles. Our, and if you want to join us, it's open to the public. You can join us for free. And our, our monthly women's circles meet once a month, just around the time of the new moon. And I always drum. And when we meet in person in real life events that I run, I always drum because the drum is the heartbeat of Mother Earth. And it's a powerful way to get in resonance and get a rhythm, not only with ourselves, but with each other and all of nature. There's a reason why women have always been drummers. So the elk is often used as the hide for drums. And the elk is symbolic of strength and nobility. Its cycle of power is autumn. So it's in its peak power time in autumn. 
It is one of the most regal animals of all of North America. As I gave as an example in my utter awe, just completely stopped me in my tracks when I saw the male deer, which was very similar to the elk. It is powerful and strong. At one time, it was found all across North America, but by the late 1800s, it was wiped out in the eastern United States. Today, it's protected, and in the western mountains, provide range and refuge for it. The Shawnee Indians named this animal Wapiti, which is probably a more appropriate name. White settlers gave it the name of elk, calling it after a European relative, which actually more resembled a moose. The elk is an animal of great strength, power, and stamina. It can run at a fast trotting pace for an extended period of time. One of its primary defenses is to outrun its predators, in fact. So again, learning the particular medicine, behaviors, patterns, attributes of each of the animals, whether it be an insect, bug, fish, whatever, reptile, it's, that's the thing. When they, these animals come to you, it's learning what are their particular unique characteristics because these are the things that I can associate with my life, with what's going on right now. So one of its primary defenses is to be able to outrun predators. So it's, what that's telling you is you might be in a period of your life right now where you need stamina, for example, to keep going when you want to quit, Okay. This is just how you apply the wisdom of the animal. The elk can sustain a strong pace for lengths of time. If an elk has come to you in your life, it can mean that you're about to hit your stride. Yeah, baby. Elk may also have shown up to teach you how to pace yourself more effectively. Have you been overdoing it? Have others around you? Have you given up or thought about giving up too soon? Are you not pursuing things enough? Are you trying for the quick and easy way out? Instead, whereas the long and steady route might be most effective for you right now. An elk takes four to five years to reach maturity. If you've start, started new projects or tasks recently, you may need to give them four to five years to see them reach the peak for success. An elk is in its power time during the fall. This is the rutting season. Except during the season of rut, elk stay with their own gender, males with males and females with females. Sometimes elks will show up as a power animal to remind us that we need to have the company of the opposite sex occasionally just for balance. Have you been neglecting your need to relate to others of the opposite sex? Are you keeping company of just one gender to neglect the other? Have you been spending too much time with the opposite sex and not enough with your own? The neck of the male elk swells during the rutting season and its bulge call sounds throughout the area. It's a way of declaring territory and affirming the relationship with the cows of the species. The neck is a bridge area, a point of crossing over. And that's true for humans as well. The neck is the bridge between the mind and the body. Okay, we know that. That's a lot of reason why sometimes symbolic, symbolically we can have tight necks because we're disconnected from our, our mind and our heart. You know, as they say, the greatest distance can be the six inches between the head and the heart, right? So the neck is a bridge area, the point of crossing over. We all need the company of the opposite gender. It does not have to be a sexual relationship, but simply spending time with others helping to balance and bridging over our own energies to higher levels. Few elk are ever loners or solitary. They congregate and live in herds, staying mostly with their own gender, which is very interesting. If, if elk has shown up, it may reflect the need for companionship or group support in some fashion. Herds of elk usually have watchouts. These elk will sound alarms through long whistles, bugling, and through raising and revealing a large rump patch. There's always a group interaction occurring. Sometimes elk will show up to teach us how to live co cooperatively in herds or groups. Are you trying to do everything yourself? Are others trying to do everything th themselves? Do you feel as if you have the strength and energy to handle all tasks alone? These are questions you can ask. Elk even make use of babysitters. 
One or two will take charge of the young, while others wander for food. It takes a village, right? <laughs> if threatened, they will defend the young with sharp hoofs. It is the young that are most vulnerable, and elk and moose are both extremely protective. Parents with elk totems or power animals can be very protective and fierce in defense of any possible threat, imagined or real. The most common predators are the mountain lion and the grizzly, although coyotes will often group hunt. As long as it's a healthy adult, the elk can usually outrun its predators. So there we are, back to its, its powerful medicine, right? Its ability to run and its stamina. This is not so with the young and the sick, but this is how the herd stays strong. A study of the elk's predators will provide further insight into the kind of energies likely to be manifesting within your life. So you might want to take a look at mountain lions and grizzly bears and a little bit of coyotes too. Elk eat mostly greens and vegetation. They do not migrate much. Their fur is thick and heavy and they can withstand the severe cold. If the weather is extremely bad with very heavy snows, they may spend the winter in the foothills where vegetation is more accessible. So anyone with elk medicine or if an elk really resonates with you as a spirit animal, make sure you have enough vegetables, organic, clean vegetables in your diet. It's a good idea. Of course, see how you feel and all that stuff and what how that works for you. The energy levels that you have might be stronger as stress is reduced and stamina is increased, but you're gonna know if it works for you because stress will increase and stamina will decrease. So if you find yourself becoming sluggish, you can call upon your elk medicine. Adjust your diet. And in just a few days, you might notice a considerable change in your energy level. All right, next up, we have the horse. Okay, I know this might be one of yours. As you know, it is one of mine. Uh, definitely one of my spirit animals and uh one day i want to do an episode on my personal myth that i discovered we all have a personal myth in life and the horse is a prominent part of my personal myth which is so cool and exciting i will share that with you in an upcoming episode so make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss all the cool shows i love sharing this stuff with you i hope you're enjoying it all right, so horse. The horse is a symbol of travel, power, and freedom, baby, freedom. The cycle of power of the horse is pretty much year-round. Hello, it's a master. <laughs> the horse is rich in lore and mythology. An entire book could be written on the significance of the horse alone, for no one single animal has contributed more to the spread of civilization than the horse. Indeed, it has been associated with both burial rites and birth, with individuals riding in and out of the world upon it. The Norse god Odin rode upon an eight-legged steed, eight legs, in the Hindu tradition, the chariot of Sura, the sun god, is pulled by stallions, as the, is the chariot of Apollo in Greek mythology. I just got that visual in my head when I thought of that. Do you know that picture? Yeah, those beautiful white stallions. In Chinese astrology, the horse is associated with appeal and persuasiveness, which is kind of interesting. That's a different spin on it, isn't it? Horses are symbols of freedom, oftentimes without the proper restraints. Mm -hmm, something to consider. Horse people in Chinese astrology are friendly and adventurous, and they can be very emotional. Before the horse's domestication, the distances between peoples and societies was great, and there was little interaction. So it served human, humanity in travel and in war and in agriculture and in most of other major areas of life. Today, the horse is limited mostly to recreation and agriculture, but its energy is expansive. Because of it, the world has been brought closer together. The horse enabled people to explore and find freedom from the constraints of their own communities. 
This enabled them to travel and thus discover the multiplicity of life and all of its powers. Horses have great appeal to most people. We are fascinated by them, and riding one raises us above the mundane and renews our sense of power. I mean, please, I hope you've ridden a horse. If not, that is major homework for you. You have to ride a horse to feel the power of that animal below your body and between your legs and carrying you, and the, just their force and their presence and they're just their massiveness <laughs> they're amazing i mean like their nostrils are like bigger than like your cheek you know it's like they're just incredible incredible creatures riding horses has been likened to flying by more than one poet throughout the ages they signify the wind and even the foam of the sea horses were given powers of divination more than one legend speaks of the clairvoyance of horses and their ability to recognize those involved in magic. They're symbols that can express the magical side of humans. That makes me think of what? The unicorn, right? The, the uh, mythical creature, which some believe is not a myth, by the way. The symbolism of horses is complex. They can represent movement and travel, or maybe it showed up to help you with movement in your life. It has been a symbol of desires, especially sexual. The stallion was often used as a symbol of sexuality. The taming of a stallion would then be the taming of sexuality and dangerous emotions. As with many domesticated animals, they are, there are a wide variety of horses each with its own unique abilities. Riding, plowing, pulling, the horse still serves a variety of functions. To understand your own particular horse spirit animal, try to determine which kind of horse you gravitate towards. Horses like dogs are bred today for, for specific purposes and determining that can help you define the purpose of the horse within your own life. Take your spirit animal and examine it in regard to yourself. What is its color? What's its kind? How does it appeal to you? Does it run? Is it always perceived standing? Do you see yourself riding it or just watching it? These are all things to consider and notice, making note of, because they're all part of its unique medicine for you. If a horse has shown up in your life, it may be time to examine aspects of travel and freedom with your, within your own life. Are you feeling constricted? Do you need to move on or allow others to move on? Is it time to assert your freedom and your power in a new area? Are you doing your part to assist civilization with your own environment? Are others, are you honoring what this civilization has given you? Horses bring new journeys. The horse can teach you how to ride into new directions to awaken and discover your own freedom and power. Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, like dream analysis, it, what I all, well, a lot of this comes down to is you tapping into the particular unique individual meaning that you give something okay so it's really not a good idea to pick up a dream book for example and think oh i was dreaming about a a couch and a this and a that and you're looking up the symbolism that the book tells you it's really about what your consciousness your soul gives the meaning to particular things so Understanding spirit guides and animals and power animals is the same way. You have to really get clear and get in tune with what is the meaning to me? Because I, I, Amy, can say this is what the horse symbolizes for me. This is what I think of. This is what I feel when I think of a horse. And it might be totally different than you, you know? So this is where the personal medicine comes in and the magic. So just keep a note of that. All right, we got two more. The lion is the next one, baby. Yes, indeed. Oh my gosh, I've been drawing lions lately. My last two paintings have lions in them and I had no idea where that came from. And it's interesting because, actually, wait a minute, three paintings have lions in them. And one of them was a lioness in particular. My warrior was riding a lioness. It was not a lion and that was for a reason. So 
I wanted to share with you the lion. Plus, a lot of us know of the lion, right? Uh, its key symbolism is assertion of the feminine and the power of the female sun. Hallelujah. Okay, the cycle of power is year round. The lion is the second largest member of the cat family. The traits of cats should be studied in general, for the lion embodies many of them. It makes its home on the savannas of Africa, and those with the spirit animal would do well to study the significance of the savannas. The lion's main prey is the antelope, and this should be studied as well. The lion has been symbolic of a variety of energies through the years. It is a symbol of the sun and of gold. It was a symbol for the sun god, Mirtha. The Egyptians believed that the lion presided over the annual floods of the Nile. Early Christians believed it was to be the earthly opponent of the eagle. The medieval alchemists associated with the fixed element of the sulfur, of sulfur, the element sulfur. And a young lion was often the symbol of the rising sun and all that is implied by that. Interesting. The lion is unusual among members of the cat family in that it will live in groups called prides. If a lion has shown up as a spirit guide, you can expect lessons and issues dealing with community and groups to surface. There may be a need to examine your own role in the group. Within the pride, the females are the best hunters. Although most lions are clumsily hunters by themselves, They've developed an excellent cooperative hunting technique. The females do most of the hunting and all the rearing of the cubs. The lion cubs lead a relatively carefree existence. We've all seen the nature channel of the cubs rolling in the grass and playing, play fighting with each other. And it's just so darn cute, isn't it? They love to play. The lion cubs lead a carefree life. Their parents are patient and affectionate with the cubs and most individuals with lions as spirit guides, will find these same qualities developing within themselves. Oh, that's so beautiful. Patient and affectionate. That's nice. The males are most most noticeable by their large mane, of course. They do very little work. (laughs) They can be passionate and excessively jealous of their lionesses. They protect the pride against predators. Not an easy job, I will add. When hunting, they use their roar to scare prey toward the awaiting lionesses. So the males cooperate in hunting with the females by using their roar to usher the prey toward the awaiting lionesses who then go in for the attack. If a male lion has shown up as your spirit guide, you may need to examine your usefulness within some group or community in your life. Do you need to do more than you are? Do you need to be more productive? Do you need to cooperate more? The lion does not fight for the sake of fighting. Something very, very important to note. And all animals, for that matter, are the same in that regard. It avoids confrontations and will leave the scene of danger if possible. This is a tactic to keep in mind if the lion is your spirit animal. Lions also hunt primarily by stealth. And the most common method of killing is by strangulation. Yikes. This technique is something for those with this spirit animal to practice developing when pursuing new endeavors and objectives in any area of life. Be stealthy and for the greatest success. The idea of the young lion being associated with the rising sun is most significant And I think it's one of the most interesting because I did not know that. Since the females of the pride do most of the work, it actually reflects the idea of the rising of the feminine energies. The sun has not always been masculine symbol, you know. I talk about that a lot when we talk about the moon being the feminine and the sun being the masculine. But that's not always been so. And a lot of people don't know that. The sun does give birth to new days, and it nurtures and warms life. Thus, it is not stretching the correlation to see the lion as the assertion of the feminine energies to bring forth birth and new power. Cool, huh? 
When the lion has shown up, there will be opportunity to awaken a new sun in you. Trust your feminine energies, which are your creative, your intuition, your imagination, which is so critically important. You know, Einstein said imagination is more important than intelligence. These will add new sunshine to your life. Don't be afraid to roar if you feel threatened or intruded upon either. Cool. Love lion medicine. All right, my friend, the last one I want to share with you, and it was so hard to pick only five, but I chose the lizard. Oh, yeah, baby. Visualize a lizard. It's like a little dragon, right? How cool. Talk about another mythical, powerful, symbolic creature. Wow, the lizards have a lot of symbolism, but predominantly it's known for subtlety of perception. Really cool quality to cultivate, I think. Subtlety of perception. The lizard is an animal of great subtlety. Its movements are quick. It has four legs and can run with great speed. Some lizards live in the house and they develop and they help to control the insect populations. The gecko lizard is one of the few reptiles that has a voice, and this should be meditated upon by anyone that has it as a, as a power animal. The Komodo dragon of Indonesia is a monster lizard. You might have seen that on the uh, Discovery Channel too. Those are those huge ones that look like dragons. So cool. And the Komodo is the largest of all lizards. If at all possible, try to identify the exact kind of lizard that comes up for you and then study that individually. Most lizards have long tails, which help them maintain balance. Mm-hmm, balance. And can also serve as a defense mechanism. Most have cre a, a crested back, ruffles, or spines. These serve as protection, but they're also very symbolic. Some have ruffles about the neck. The neck is an area that bridges the higher and the lower, like I've mentioned before. And lizards with them are those that can teach you how to bridge the subconscious with the conscious. So if the lizard has ruffles on its neck, that's symbolic of bridging your conscious and subconscious. And I'll just add, I would think the lion's mane is like that too, right? Kind of makes sense to me. So it's your ability to dream while awake. I love that. Dream while we're awake. Who knows when you're really dreaming and who knows what's really awake, right? When you have a dream, it sure does feel like it's real. That's another show. <laughs> All right. So lizards can stimulate lucid dreaming, which is super powerful and plugged in. That's for sure. Those with spines and crests, the lizards that is, along the spine, usually reflect the sensitiv sensitivities of the chakras, which are heightened or are about to be. You are, being, are you being too sensitive or maybe not sensitive enough? Are you being too picky or are you missing the obvious? These are questions to ask. It can also reflect that the kundalini or life force is active and flowing strongly in you which will heighten all sensitivities, physical, emotional, mental, psychic, and spiritual. A lizard has an ability to recognize the subtle insect movements and it can remain still or relatively still so it misleads the prey or to protect itself. This indicates that your intuition and psychic perceptions are either already active or about to be activated more strongly. Pay attention. There are a number of characteristics that distinguish a lizard from other reptiles, and these are important. They too have dry skin and many, they also have claws and things like that. They're also sensitive to vibrations in the ground. They feel the vibrations with their feet, tail, and body. Their eyes are sharp with an ability to detect the slightest movement around them. They also have acute hearing. Again, another creature that we don't necessarily see its ears, but who, who knew that their sense of hearing is a huge part of their being? Love it. All of these characteristics give it a symbolism associated with the psychic and therefore the intuitive qualities. The ability to perceive subtle movement physical, and etherical, 
Waking or sleeping is what the lizard medicine teaches. To some within the Native American traditions, the lizard is associated with dream time. Dreams contain some of the subtlest perceptions of the mind of which we may not be conscious. They are translated to us through dreams to make us more conscious. These can be fears or even foreshadowings, but almost always they are the things to which we do not pay attention. Individuals with a lizard totem should listen to their own intuition, certainly over anyone else's. Lizards usually reflect heightened sensitivity. You feel what others may not. Indeed, I will add. You will see things that others may miss. You will hear things that are not being said. No matter how strange it may seem, learning to follow these perceptions is what will enable you to succeed most frequently. Mm, ponder that for a bit. Yes. One of the most significant characteristics of some lizards is their claim to fame is the ability of their tail to come off. Of course, I know you're waiting for that one. A predator may grab it. It's pawing, landing on the tail, only to be surprised as the tail breaks off and the lizard scampers to freedom. The lizard then begins the process of growing another tail in its place. This detachment is also part of what the lizard teaches. They can help us to become more detached in life to survive. So the lizards can symbolize the need to detach in order for you to survive. Ponder that for a bit. I remember I was working with my mentor and toward the beginning of our work together years ago, and we were doing plant medicine. And uh, right when we were about to start, after we took the medicine, we went outside by a waterfall. And I walked outside before he came out. And standing there, right where we were about to lay down on the ground, was this huge lizard with the longest tail I'd ever seen in my life. And apparently the longest tail my mentor had ever seen in his life. And he, it was his house. And uh, we both were just staring at it. And we had like a stare down. The lizard didn't move. I didn't move. Nobody moved. I didn't know what to do. I couldn't believe it. And sure enough, after that journey was over, I had to look up the meaning of a lizard, and it was for certain about detaching a major prominent issue in my life that I was dealing with. And uh, wow, powerful, powerful medicine. Thank you, Mr. Lizard or Miss Lizard, whatever you were. Can't tell the gender of a lizard, can you? <laughs> I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was male or female, but I guess it doesn't matter. I got the message loud and clear. Thank you, Mama Lizard or Papa Lizard. Okay, so they can help you to learn how to become detached in order for you to survive. Sometimes it's necessary to separate ourselves or part of ourselves from others in order to be able to do things we must or what we desire to do. Indeed. The lizard helps us to awaken the ability for objective detachment so that it can occur with the least amount of difficulty. Lizards can show up to help you break the past. That's what happened to me. It may even indicate a need to explore new realms and follow your own impulses for you before you get swallowed up in what is not beneficial for you. Like most reptiles, the lizard will often bask in the sun. Hmm, maybe I'm part lizard. I love laying in the sun. It is cold-blooded, and it needs the warmth of the sun to stay warm. This basking is often feigned sleep so it fakes being asleep and it serves a secondary purpose of fooling insects that may mistakenly come too close this ability of feigning sleep while basking in the sun is sometimes related to controlling the sleep state especially dreams lizard as mentioned earlier is the spirit animal that can help us understand and use this state more effectively. So really good to just put a pen in, like lizards are connected to the dream state, that realm of our lives. Um, something uh, that obviously is super, super significant because, you know, the majority of our being, like what's it, like 85% of us is unconscious, right? That the, Running the programming behind the scenes that we're not even aware of. And the dream is 
dream and imagination is dreams and imagination are the primary access to that that unconscious state. And that's why using your imagination, daydreaming, turning off your phone, turning off, receiving all the information from the outside world, and just letting your mind wander can be such a powerful medicine because that's where the mind goes and plays and makes associations. It's free, you know, just being free to breathe and let your mind just think, you know, these days people, if they have a spare second, they're in line at at the grocery store or whatever, or they're waiting for an elevator, or even that they're sitting at a traffic light, you see them immediately grab for their phone. We've totally lost the ability to just, just be and just disconnect and let the mind just wander and, oh, look at that tree over there. Oh, look at the dirt on the ground of the elevator. Oh, I'm thinking about that conversation I had earlier and just letting it go through my mind and mull around. We've lost that really critical time in our lives to just let the mind wander even if it's for a few minutes every day because of the access of our phones and how it's captured our attention, right? That can be a problem. So another piece of homework for you is to try to have some time where you just disconnect every day and just let your mind wander, you know, discipline yourself not to grab your phone on impulse every time you have a down second. Let yourself have a down second, you know, and you wonder why your brain is so hyperactive and you think you have ADD. (laughs) <laughs> right? Because your brain never gets a chance to just play and be free. That's the definition of play. It's non, non-directed. non There's no goal. You know, you're not focused on an outcome when you're playing. You're just playing for the joy of playing, right? It's just play. It's fun. It's free. The mind needs to be free too. And once the mind is free, it can help your soul be free. And that's where the magic begins. So, wow, the lizard is powerful. I wonder which one of the five animals I mentioned today resonate the most with you. Remember, there's every single creature, aquatic life, reptile, everything. They're all important. The ant is as significant as the uh, elephant. Okay, they're all part of the ecology of the planet, of the world, of life as we know it. They all have a very specific, very important role, just like you. You have a very, very specific, important role. Now, you might not know what it is right now. Many of us are still walking the path as we're figuring out, but just one foot ahead of the other, one step at a time, and it will be revealed to you Follow your heart, the things that make you lose track of time, the things that you love to do, the things you long to do, the things that you truly enjoy and make you just, like I said, lose track of time. You just get caught up in it. That's the magic of the creative imagination and that's your soul's path. So I love to hear what you think about today. I wonder which animal is the most interesting to you. If you'd like to hear more about animal medicine and power animals and spirit guides, please let me know. I would just be forever indebted if you would leave a review. They really do help the show. They help me know that I'm reaching you and it helps grow the show so I can reach more people and keep going. Also, please subscribe and share the show if you feel inclined, because that's another great way to support me, because I love supporting you and I love the reciprocal nature of us supporting each other. But at the very least, I'm just glad you're here. That's the most important thing. Thank you for being with me. I really, really enjoyed it. I could talk forever about animals, obviously. And remember, you might want to check out the book, Animals Speak by Ted Andrews. It is truly a classic. It's a bestseller for a reason, as all his books. And I have pretty much all of his books. And check out episode 78, where I talk about the first half of Animals Speak gives the background of it and check out the episode. I think it was 65 with me and Allison Charles. And I have a lot of shows actually on nature and um, animals and more to come. All right. Until next time, my friend, be happy, be healthy, and be connected to your spirit animals. Enjoy and observe nature and learn with an open heart and mind. Till next time. Would you like to support my mission to help empower people all over the world to be all of who they truly are? If so, please subscribe to the show, leave a review on iTunes, and share it with a friend. And if you're looking to take immediate action to align your energy and optimize your health, visit amyfournier.com. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite. Let's awaken her together in you. I'm your hostess, Amy Fournier. 
and I already can't wait to be with you again and for you to hear what I have planned for the next show. Thanks for listening to Awakening Aphrodite with Amy Fournier. To learn more about Amy, check out her website, amyfournier.com. That's A-M-Y-F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R.com. You can also check out Amy's live and on-demand virtual fitness and yoga classes and sign up for her newsletter to receive a free mini ebook of three of her top tips for making holistic health a lifestyle. Again, that's amyfournier.com and get your ebook sent to your email immediately. Connect with Amy on the daily on Instagram at fitamytv, F-I-T-A-M-Y-T-V, and watch many of the podcast episodes and subtopic clips on her YouTube channel, which is also fitamytv. Enjoy, and we'll see you next time on Awakening Aphrodite.